Hey, how's it going everybody? I'm Ben from Universal Audio and welcome back for another Luna Office Hours. Uh, I think we're on day 45, like I, I've lost track of all these sessions, but uh, man, we're, we're having a ton of fun and this afternoon I'm joined by Tom and Drew from the Office Hours crew. What's Hello. Up, wow. Hi everybody. How you doing? How you doing Ben, Tom? Doing, doing well, doing so well. Great. Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys too. So, uh, it's been Man, a while. I know, right? <laughs> Tom, it's been so many hours since I last saw your face. <laughs> I see you more than I see my own like, house right now. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I know, man. My, my, I come downstairs after these sessions and my wife's like, who are you? Like, <laughs> are you that weird ghost that's like upstairs talking to themselves the whole time? With the crazy uh, closet that changes colors? Uh-huh, exactly. Oh, yeah, everyone's always asking on the chat, by the way, like how yeah. come your guitar closet moves from one side to the other? Because yeah. we've obviously got image flip. Sometimes mm -hmm. I think it goes left, sometimes it goes right. And but, how uh, does it do that? Yeah. Oh, look. <laughs> We can we can we can go full party mode. I'm saving this oh, for yeah. uh, this is for happy Friday hour. After. Exactly, that's happy hour tomorrow. Uh, for now, we'll just we'll we'll go static blue. Two for one cocktails when the lights flash in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so this morning we had a really awesome session with uh, Paul Drew from the Studio Rats. Uh, which if you guys missed that office hours, A, I'd highly recommend going back and checking it out. But the other thing I'm going to plug is this playlist that we have on our YouTube channel. It's a Luna user videos. You can find it there. Uh, we've been collecting all of the content and videos that people have been uh, putting out around Luna. Um, so if you are, if you somehow are watching office hours and you still want to know more or see, you know, uh, other people's opinions about uh, about Luna and how to do things in there. Uh, this is a great resource for that. But one thing you're going to notice is that there's a lot of videos in there from this channel called the Studio Rats. That's who we had on this morning. Paul Drew uh, has been working in uh, working in Luna for the last uh, couple of weeks and made a bunch of great content all inside Luna. Uh, but what's really cool is uh, this video here. He actually recorded a song uh, collaborating with uh, musicians, uh, songwriters. Um, and everybody is all recording remotely and then he combined that together inside of Luna uh, and then spent about a day or two I think on the mix so th in this morning session he shared the the session and uh, his mix of it which sounds amazing he had a lot of really great tips both about uh, mixing but also about production specifically about like layering and uh, and the guitars uh, but then you know if you if you didn't see the whole session you missed out the best part which was at the very end because we were frantically uploading it while we were streaming but he also shared the session file so you can actually go download the luna session it's the raw stems so you'll you'll notice all the tracks are in here uh but there's no plugins so it is a blank canvas for you guys uh to download and get some really it's a really cool like modern rock kind of sound uh, you know, it's a little bit like a pop rock, uh, very Tom called it LA rock. Um, <laughs> and it's a, it's a really cool song. It's, it's super well tracked and it gives you guys, it'll give you guys, a, uh, who are at home a chance to, uh, get in here and play around. You know, you can add tape to the tracks. You could set up buses and, you know, demo the Neve summing, which is kind of a good, uh, a good place to experiment and kind of start learning the sound and the functionality inside Luna. Uh, especially, you know, if you're like me, I'm not a drummer, I don't have a drum set around me. So I, uh, I'm kind of relying on old sessions and on stuff like this to be able to find new, uh, fresh material to be, uh, mixing and, and playing around with inside of Luna. Um, so we'll hit you guys with a link for that session file it should be popping up here in the chat. Um, it's in the Facebook chat already. Perfect. Yeah, I've just posted it out. And Hey Ben, is the, the ref mix, is that, is that the. That's Printed Paul. Mix? Is that a rough mix? Mm -hmm. No, that's Paul's. That's Paul's final mix. Okay, of it. cool. I haven't had to check it out yet, so that's great. You can get to hear what he did with it and hear rewatch the video, and then sort of like try and see if you can top it. You know, see if you can mm -hmm. see if you can hang with that mix. It's a great mix. It is, it's yeah, a yeah. really good mix. It is. What's worth mentioning that that mix that's at the top of the session is mastered as well. So if you're going to try and match that for level wise when you're mixing, mm -hmm. I'm not always like a huge fan of recommending that. But you know, maybe have a limiter on your output that you can turn on and off to see how you like match up to that level wise without sort of like crushing your own mix to try and yeah. compete well, or turn it down a bit. And then I was going to yeah, say, yeah. Yep. This is this is my my go to for when somebody sends me something. You know, especially if they send you a rough mix and you're like, all right, good job mastering, guys. That sounds very nicely distorted. Well done. Uh, and then, you know, no matter what you do, you're always going to, your mix is always going to be behind what they sent as a, a mastered, you know, mastered rough or whatever. Uh, that's where clip gain comes in handy. So you can actually just take that clip as I'm showing here, uh, grab this clip gain fader here, bring it down. 
I tip my my go to for when something is your screen sharing, Ben. Sorry, dude. Oh yeah, sorry. I'm sharing it with the world, but not you guys. Um, yeah, that's what I'm oh. looking at. The, I'm looking at the uh, the screen. Oh, so if the world is saying it, that's fine. I was just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Are you sure? <laughs> exactly. So the uh, so yeah, you can use clip gain here, and my my go to is six dB. Um, like I typically want to want to have that that amount, and this is even without listening to this uh, to where he's at, but just. Give yourself that headroom, and you know there's a lot of his other tracks. Most of them are they're all super well gain staged. Like nothing is uh, really peeking out or doing too much. Um, so yeah, just kind of bringing that down, and I always also slap a limiter on my master uh, because that's that's the kind of mixed guy I am. Um, so yeah, so that's an incredible resource. Go download it now. Uh, really great sounding tracks, and then. Um, Someone saying in the chat, by the way, Ben, that the ref mix is uh, inactive. It's not, it's just muted. So if you click on the ref clip mm -hmm. and hit command M, you can unmute the clip. It's just that uh, if you're me and you start clearing solos and mutes and stuff, when you're trying yeah, to, um, you don't want that blasting. That would just like blast tracks. you. So I, I muted it so that no one blows out the speakers or their ears, but Smart move. definitely go get that. Yeah. Yep, but it so might confuse somebody. So there you go. Command M that's the, that's the short. And, he, and of course you can do this on any region. So like say, Say I want to do my own special mix of this, and I don't want any lead vocals in the chorus. I can do that. I can just select. All I did right there is I just selected the area of the regions that I, I wanted to uh, chop up, and then hit B to separate, and then Command M to mute. And it allows you I to do that it. a lot. Yeah, that's like kind of my. I do that workflow a lot because it's much better than deleting. Because when you delete, you leave a hole that you don't know what was there three weeks later. So with, mm -hmm. with muting clips, you're like, you can make something go away, but, but you'll still remember three weeks from now. So I do that quite a lot. Exactly. Uh, and another positive about working, doing this sort of thing inside of Luna is you can always undo any of these changes. So I can, all right now I'm just hitting command Z, command Z, command Z, and I'm able to back up all the way to uh, the state of the session of which let's actually, let's see how far we can take that. I think I just undid all the tape machines. I did a bunch of muting. Let me see. I wonder if I can even get rid of tracks. Und undo some things Tom did. I know. Oh, yep. You can yeah, see. Yeah, I'm, look I'm there you are. Reordering the That's tracks. True. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh god, um, yeah. You can probably find the color coding, the fact that I fixed the little fade in the overheads, and, uh, <laughs> and you'll get that back. As well. <laughs> yeah. You'd be. You guys would be surprised how much how much good stuff is in the uh, the Luna undo buffer. Uh, but that's what you know. That's kind of the powerful thing about it is it's it's always saving. It's always there uh, with whatever you, whatever you did. You can always get back, which I I really love that part of the workflow. Nice. Well, and Tom, thank you so much, man, for helping organize that with uh, with Paul and the Studio at Crew. Total pleasure, always. We've got more coming as well. I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun for everyone. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. So um, this is the first of of many Luna sessions, right? Oh yeah, this is the tip of the iceberg. This is this is one that uh, this was us doing the, the quick little oh crap, let's release the software early dance uh, because we do have we do have a much more uh, thorough and thought through one uh, that we've been showing off. We showed off at Nam. Uh, Jakir uh, King and Cass McCombs went down to United Recording Studios down in LA. Uh, previously known as Oceanway Studios, and we were in the big, uh, big A room there for like three or four days, recording a song entirely inside of Luna. Um, and actually, I we just got the masters back for that yesterday, and it sounds so good. I, I'm so excited for you guys mm -hmm. to hear how that song turned out. Uh, at at Nam, we kind of played some of the rough mix, and you know, after that, we actually came. Jakir and Cass came out here to Santa Cruz and recorded some strings and uh, some vocal overdubs for that song. So the production's kind of gone even further, and then now Jakir's giving it uh, his, uh, his little special sauce on the mix, and it sounds so good. Um, and that whole that Luna session uh, will be similar to this one, except that one you'll also be able to get with all of Jakir's plugins and settings, everything on the tracks. So you can right. uh, you can pull up pull it up demo uh, demo some of those plugins demo the summing and the tape again uh, and really kind of see see how a uh, a Grammy winning producer engineer creates a song from scratch inside of Luna. And you'll even be able to you'll even be able to get a a, a glimpse into the input chains because if you mm -hmm. were to arm the tracks the input chains will be reconstructed for you right. Exactly. Uh, there's there's definitely some things I was talking to with one of our other artists earlier. Sometimes if you don't have the exact same unit configuration, sometimes those things will get a little bit lost. Like you know, because ah. we were recording with like an X8P and an X16 Makes and a sense, twin, yeah. and you know, so we had a ton of inputs going on. Um, so the stuff that was in unison, I think, will come back 
Fingers hmm. crossed. Uh, like if yeah. you had, say you just have a twin and you open up the session, uh, I think the twin settings would come back in, but potentially the rack ones might not. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 So it's it's one of those it's one of those features that's incredibly powerful and it works super duper well on your rig and being able to pull back sessions on your rig. So like say you yeah. wanna, uh, you know, you say you do a guitar overdub, and then two weeks later you wanna fix a note and do it again. You just grab the same guitar, hit record input on that track on your rig. And it pulls back all the same exact unison and record effects on that right. track, uh, which is a really powerful. It's a bit of a time saver rather than having to reconstruct your input chain. Um, mm -hmm. It can it can be saved along with each track. Uh, cool. So the uh, Drew, I know we've we've actually had this example sitting here in the wings for people, but uh, we've been talking here. Let's 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 show people some music and some sonic stuff that you can do inside of Luna. Uh, okay. You've got a pretty, you've got this kick-ass kind of a stem mastering session set up for us, right? Yeah, it's yeah. It was one of the things, you know, when we were decided to do these things. It was I was thinking like what trying to come up with thought, you know, ideas of things that people might use, and this is this is a good example. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, and uh, this is a good example for you know Luna's designed to work inside of you know we want it to be able to get into your workflow right away so and you know not everybody's going to want to switch dolls right away and mm -hmm. and uh and go into luna but this is an instance this is an example of something you can do with luna right away um and really bring it make it a part of your production and and, and i was i mean i kind of did this for these office hours specifically but it really like i was i was shocked at how good it was and i'm like man this like i mean i think this <laughs> is probably to, gonna become i was like did you, you know, have to send it back to the client and be like hey actually i managed to make it even better <laughs> well the lucky thing the cool thing is is this this is a project that's not finished yet so like i literally oh, nice. I, i'm gonna take this i'm gonna take this and run with it i think this is how i'm gonna finish out this project mm -hmm. um you know so this was something that this is a mix that's not that's almost done but um it's it's not quite done uh it was done in pro tools and i i just I stemmed it out here and I just kept it. Uh, I did drums and percussion. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a bass stem, um, which I did in stereo, even though it's not really necessary, but, um, and then I did acoustic guitar, electric guitar and vocals. And, yes. um, you know, just as basic, the basic way you would do that. Um, and I can just, we can listen to some of these. You know, I just have the drums with all their effects. Drums with all of their effects and everything and the bass in this case. kind of a, a gritty bass sound there nice. um was there was there an svt involved in that uh there actually you know what it was it was a uh, uh dark glass ah, uh you oh, know the okay. pedals yeah mm -hmm. it was it was that uh I, i'm sorry i can't remember the name of the company i think the name of the company is dark glass but it is the, uh, it is because the guy that designs all the stuff is douglas but i think from where he i've got told the story once that because the way people pronounce his name because he's from somewhere and i think don't correct correct me if i'm wrong and don't correct me but i think it's because douglas when you pronounce it with an accent sounds a little bit like dark glass that's oh wow okay that. that's awesome <laughs> i didn't know that that's good that's a great story yeah that's that that's that uh that they're they do they have it's great great uh for adding some grit on the bass mm -hmm. uh some acoustic guitar that sounds like yeah that's what that's tuned idea. down Sheps. Uh, no, it's just just some layered, just some layered. Uh, it might have been. I don't know if it was K that, or not. It's like it, it almost sounds like drop D, doesn't it? it it's got like a real, low, yeah. such a great yeah. richness to it. Yeah, that's the Sheps uh, MK4 CMC six bat uh, capsules with MK4. Oh, one of my such favorite mic. Such yeah. a good mic. Yeah. Uh, Musical like and clean. It's like hard to find actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. I went to a uh, I went to like a tech a tech talk like like 15 years ago that the, the, the designer of the Sheps microphones and, and the guy was so impressive. I just like, I bought a pair on the spot, you know, it was just the guy, the, like the technology was so good. And I, I had heard they had such a good reputation and I use them on everything. They're just like, I have them perpetually on a, on a, a ORTF XY bar on a stand in the studio every day, you know, just, just always ready to go. Always, always ready to go. Yeah. Drum overheads, acoustic guitar, everything. Uh -huh. Grand piano um, those is beautiful. Oh yeah. So yeah. So this, so this was kind of a typical thing, you know, I, I made the stems here. They are in the session, you know, the real, uh, the real magic is kind of happening here in, you know, in the mixer window. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, I've got all of the, the stems of course, feeding 
a uh, you know feeding a, a mixed bus. Now the way I set this up was I purposely made a what I called a mass bus, mm -hmm. as opposed to using the main out in case I wanted to at some point uh, a b with something like we were just talking about before. Um, oh yeah, so you could actually set up a second bus and like kind of a b between two different chains. Yeah, that yeah that or or some reference material so that you you can put stuff on the master bus chain that won't uh, mm -hmm. mess mess around with your reference material. Nice, and the, with the way the solos work too, you'd be able to do uh, you could use the solo buttons to quickly A B and cancel yeah. out. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, so anyway, yeah. So it's 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 a pretty simple session. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing to note here um, is that one of the cool things I like about this, you know, the way luna feels and it feels so analog you know the, the base the base stem i wound up printing at what i thought was a decent level but in hindsight it was a little hot and since the base since you have a lot of rich bottom end you know that kind of that that feeds more energy into these into the modeling thing so for example tape will tape and, and anything that's average related like that will will get more energy from low end so i actually wound up having to clip gain back the base a little bit um in order to and pull the fader down a little bit in order to get it to, to sit where I wanted it to sit. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so enough talking, I guess, let me, let me listen to it. I guess, um, I guess I'll start with, uh, maybe I'll start with this, with everything on yeah. and then turn it off. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do two different comparisons. I'm going to start with just the tape and I'm just going to use the power button here, as you can see, uh, which I could also do it by option clicking there, but I just kind of like the power button over here. Yep. Um, so, so let me start there. And I'm starting in kind of the big section of the song. This is kind of a big dreamy rock song. Um, and I'm starting in the bigger section uh, because I want to, that's just a good place to listen to it. So yeah. here it comes. So there's a couple little uh, wow, dude. A couple the, little the, ABs there. The difference that that makes, like when you take it away, especially. I, I've been talking about this a bunch this week. Like it's one of those things. Like when you take it away, you're like, N where'd my thing? Like where'd that pretty mix go? And then like, yeah, it's, it's totally fine. It's actually, you know, it's still good solid mix without it. But the the amount of richness and depth to all the tracks. It's uh, it's unbelievable. So it sounds so good to me, man. Yeah, there's something about there. I, I find that to be true too. Is the taking away like that's the that's when you're doing abs. The the going away is almost always more. You you learn more when it goes away than when it comes on. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was pretty. I'm being the other thing. I'm really I'm really adamant about making sure level matching is good because you know you can trick people pretty easily. But that for me, like the the top end just is completely changed in character. Like without it it's like, it makes me think, what was I thinking when I was mixing it that I, that I thought that was okay. But anyway, so, so there's that. And then, and then I also have some summing here and you'll notice here that I am, I am using this in maybe a slightly unorthodox way mm -hmm. because I'm using the low impedance, which is where you get the grunt, but I'm, I'm, I'm using the, uh, I've dialed back the headroom. So I've like, I've lessened the, the impact. So I'm, that's a good trick for, for, you know, the high impedance is definitely more, uh, less coloration, a little more airy and sheeny, and whereas the low impedance is definitely more gritty. But you can, you know, just double clicking on the headroom button. It's a reciprocal gain there, and it, you know, I, I I leaned towards, I leaned out of it a little bit. So oh, we just lost your mic, Drew. Or did Tommy still getting him? Um, Oh, I'm not getting him. I will just grab him on chat. One sec, people. He's rocking out. Oh, we seem to have lost his playback too. Actually, yeah, I think his I think his uh, Apollo driver might have collapsed under the Take weight, all of the pressure. Oh, bless. Okay. Oh. Well, we can hop into some plugin stuff, but let me just uh, quickly get yeah. hold of him on the chat for a sec, people. Otherwise. <laughs> 
I canceled <laughs> the screen share and he started again. Ah. <laughs> he's, he's still going. He's like, I will not be defeated. This is his moment. Yeah, um, I know, right? Um, we've, okay. Did he hit him? There you go. I'm hit, I've hit him. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Folks. This, this is check. this is 100 percent live. Uh, and uh, I'm kind of watching some of the comments over here come in. Uh, I'm so, I'm really glad we got at least one good playback in before we lost Drew's audio. Uh, because yeah, the, the the impact that that adds, and he was he was pulling on he was pulling the same trick that I was showing last night in the after hours session of using the Neve summing, but bringing that headroom control all the way to the left. Uh, you get this super clean, you know, very you get a, a lot of space in the mix uh, dynamically to play with on the Neve summing. Uh, but also, I did see a comment coming through. Someone was kind of asking about uh, you know being able to see stuff getting created live on uh on air so you know obviously it makes it makes everyone's lives a little bit easier if we pre-prepare some things to show you guys but you should definitely check out yesterday's session with leggy which should be up on our youtube channel by now um and in that one you guys can check out um he starts he from scratch with started keys talking, and uh -huh. drum beats and all sorts of stuff yeah yep. i've just said that in the chat like defo he's he's probably like he's just that guy isn't he he just likes he's going to wing it and make a cool track and it, it turned out fly like my favorite comment was like somebody said i think i think you know we're gonna have a child after listening to this tune it was like <laughs> it was that smooth you know it was so funny but yeah a lot of the stuff that you and me have done ben we've had some pre-produced stuff because you know we're taking questions too so it's kind of to try and start a track from scratch um you know it's definitely doable but when we're taking questions it's a little mm -hmm. it needs to be the focus of the show but you know next week we're going to have a guy um recording and playing and writing you know uh, playing acoustic guitar and singing hopefully yep so that will be real time tracking and uh we can throw some elements into that so well and tomorrow yeah, tomorrow to see, tomorrow morning too we got dj jazzy jeff is joining tomorrow's office hours Ooh, it's i mean people <laughs> people oh, come on oh man it's, it's gonna be we're gonna have a lot of fun tomorrow morning with him uh and he's been up and running i had a call with him earlier today to check in and see how he's doing uh so he's up and running in luna and he's got some really cool stuff uh, specifically around uh hip-hop beat making and he's been using the mpc combined with luna as well uh so yeah if you guys are at all into pr uh, production and beat making uh jazzy's got he's gonna he's gonna show you guys some some of the little tricks he's got up his sleeve uh, but he, you know, similar to what we did with Tyler Bryant, he's also, he was like, Ben, I got so many questions for you. I'm like, great. Don't ask me them now. Ask me tomorrow and we'll do it on air together. Uh, so you know, what I, what I find a lot of times is as people are getting started and getting up and running inside Luna, everyone's kind of got about the same, you know, 10 to 12 questions, um, that, you know, once you kind of know a few shortcuts, once you know a few workflow things, uh, it, may, it just kind of comes, it starts really making sense and coming alive uh for what you're doing yeah definitely and he's been what well, he's been producing tracks for probably 30 years mm -hmm. i don't want to take a big guess at this because i'm probably wrong on my dates but <laughs> it's got to be that long so the fact yeah. that the guy you know he's making these he's been making tracks with like the earliest ever samplers and now running a classic sampler alongside the most modern mm -hmm. integrated you know recording system that's come out you know like two weeks ago is, is crazy like he's still trying new things you know which i think is great because sometimes it's easy to fall into habits right ben as you mm -hmm. produce music for years and years and years but i think having that there's a there's a phrase i've always used which i'm going to chuck in here just because i think it's interesting but um you've got to have i i think you have to have the curiosity of like an eight-year-old you, you remember when you were eight and you're just like what is this ant doing in the street or whatever yeah. you know like you're going to chase uh -huh. every little detail of life you kind of got to be that but you've also got to be as skeptical as a 60 year old that sat there going, I've seen it all before boy. <laughs> and if you, if you can do those two mindsets, then you'll make a really great audio engineer. Cause you kind of uh -huh. like have to be musically vibey and like looking for the new thing, mm -hmm. but then skeptical enough to see whether you like it or not and be critical about your musical kind of like taste. So I think the fact that he's trying something new and he's been making music for so long, that's a, that's huge. You know, such a testament to that mentality. Right. Oh, absolutely! Hey, look who look who's back! Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry about that, guys. Uh, how how, did, how bad was that? Uh, what did it look like? Oh, it was it fine. Perfect. You yeah. thought you were miming? Yeah, <laughs> it, it was just. <laughs> It's a little quiet. We're like, wow. Okay, Did you yeah. get any of it? I mean, uh, so it, was, it dropped out right as he started to do the Neve example. Uh, oh, okay. Like literally, when he went to go hit play, is when we lost all of your audio. Uh, you want uh, me to try again, or yeah, you wanna... but, yeah, the people, yeah, yeah, sure, dude, the, the people want to hear what this what this Neve is all about. So okay, I'm still yeah, I'm still connected to you, so it should I should be able to hear your feed. Yeah, let's I'm gonna see, hit the uh, chat while you get that going. All right, so we'll get. Let's try this again. Um, 
So I was doing the Neve example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so in this case, yeah. So I think uh, we had, we had done the explaining. So let's just jump back in and see what happens. There you go. Dude, that's a, uh, who, by the way, who is this band? Uh, that's a band called Vest Ascension. They're kind of, they, they call themselves Dream Rock, but they're, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, they kind of big, dreamy, sort of soundscapey rock stuff. Um, it's super cool, man. Yeah. It's a, such a cool track. And again, you know, taking the Neve in and out like that, you can really, you get a sense like when it's gone, you're like, oh man, I miss it. Like some, there's a, you know, there's like a DB, maybe a DB and a half of a gain difference happening there too. But like, it's still, it's more than that. It's like the tone difference, yeah. the, the forward push that you get of the mix. Um, yeah, dude, it's just, that's adding so much life to that track. Yeah, I built I built the example trying to show off the summing, which it, it definitely does do. But the, it was the tape thing that like mm -hmm. shocked me, like just like, you know, how, how good and what that did to the top end it did to the bottom end. So, yeah. Should we have a listen to a couple of those stems on their own, Drew? I'd be really curious to hear just like drums and bass with the tape yeah, sure. on them. Sure. What do you reckon, Ben? Yeah. Um, so let's see, we'll do, uh, we can do the drums. Let's try drums and bass together. <clears throat> of the drums for sure you know the, the, especially that's where i really like the the tape is really like sort of nice and up the top end on those mm -hmm. on the drums it's the perfect amount of song. It's burying the pick attack of the bass, which obviously is like you normally amp that stuff up in rock music, right? To get it to cut with the guitars and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. but I love how the tape's just kind of gone. Yeah, we need that. But we also like bring back all the like low end thickness. And it's kind of bringing on my headphones, at least bringing up like 200, mm -hmm. which yeah. is going to help that bass sit on a laptop speaker when you're talking about mixed translation, like having harmonics in it. Yep. To get it on a small speaker like an Oratone or, or laptop speakers. Is yeah, amazing. and you know what's interesting? If you look at this, this is and this is something I've been noticing people online is if I don't know, you probably can't tell this, but um, the the uh, the bottom end I had to I you probably can't see this. It's so tiny, but like I had to dial back. I did I dialed back the repro EQ on the low end on the bass because. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that and that and I also had to do some clip gain on it, which is this is a topic that I've seen a lot of discussion about online, actually, is this whole idea of gain staging in Luna and and people have been asking how to do it. I think it, for me, one of the it, Luna almost has built in gain staging in the sense that the tape tells you yeah. exactly how, where like, you're that's at your gain staging. Yeah, uh -huh. it's yeah. like it couldn't be any simpler, you know, it, so for me. This this bass stem is perfectly legitimate. It's a perfectly reasonable level, but mm -hmm. it had a bottom end such that that and that you know the VU meter on the tape machine told me that it was a little hot. I backed it off on the clip gain. It was still a little, and I dialed back the the low end uh, there, so it was Dude, good. People people cannot sleep on how important it is that there are now VU meters available all across your session. You can have yeah. them at the top of your buses with the new summit. You can have them on individual channels with those, and that's not just some like uh, you know it's not a toy the the view meters that are there those are not just like we put them there for show no those are like yeah. cali calibrated actual useful vu meters with ballistics uh, programmed into them so like uh this is the same as if you were using a the meter on an actual studer so you can actually use that for gain station purposes like you mentioned and uh i've been uh, i've 
really, really like seeing that sort of metering because peak metering is really helpful for make sure you're not losing information or clipping yeah. and kind of giving you a general idea. But like that has no relationship to how loud something actually sounds. Whereas yeah. a VU meter will actually give you a much more accurate uh, representation of how loud your program material is. And they're frequency dependent. They're, it, like VU meters are energy meter. They're not just mm -hmm. level meters. They're level and energy. So like bottom end reacts into a you know, pushes a VU meter different than top end does. And so it's really kind of foolproof if you just, you know, use the tape to, to use your tape as your guideline. And then, you know, the faders obviously feed the buses and, and you're, it's pretty much foolproof in that sense. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's so funny how people say like, Oh, you know, a long time ago, people said VU meters were gone because they were slow reading and they were, they're designed to read speech and, and basically sine waves. That's about it. Right. But, um, like Vance Power was saying this as well, Ben, when he was on session with you, that he basically relies on everything eyeballing those VU meters because he kind of want enough bounce in it mm -hmm. that the music's alive. If it's stationary, then you've definitely gone too far. Yep. <laughs> you know? and, uh, yep. and so, you know, I actually, I actually built a pair up here in uh, my rack. You can't see it, but I've got a pair that I have as my main output VUs. And mm -hmm. I, I rely on them so much. And once you start seeing them, yep. I, re I realize that although digital metering is really important for obviously like peak output levels, especially for streaming and making sure you don't clip and having sample peaks and all this stuff that's like good engineering practice, the shape of your mix is like so visible on a VU meter. And if you listen to music or just import some ref tracks in and just watch it on, the, on an Eve bus, you know, You'll be able to see, like, if you trim the, the ref mixes down to a suitable level, so you're not just pushing, yeah, them, yeah. clipping the knee. You'll just learn, like, what that thing should look like. And I, I honestly believe, like, over time, people are going to find them more useful for music mixing again inside Luna than they. The you know, whole you've been used to not seeing them for like 15 years. But yeah, it's still the thing. The whole the loudness wars would not have happened if everyone was using VU meters. Like mm -hmm. that's what that's what made the loudness yeah. wars happen is people stopped using VU meters. There was a know? peak meter. There was a zero. There was a yeah. finite. Like we yep. can go up to here. Yeah. You guys have fun crunching as close as you can to that zero as yep. possible. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Back in the day when it was you know you print a tape and you take a tape and you print it onto vinyl. Every all those were analog. The only the only law in the world was like zero VU is about where we want to be. We, everybody agree? All right, cool. Yeah. And then it, that kind of set the reference level. But you had uh, so much more headroom above where that actually was to reproduce sound. Yeah, zero dB VU is is mo in most systems negative eighteen and dBFS and on a on a on a pro on a bar graph meter that looks like that looks wimpy quote unquote you know what I mean? like, mm -hmm. you, you, like you said ben you're like i i gotta get i got all this space i gotta fill it up but exactly um so anyway this is simple this is a pretty simple example but it was something that i just threw together and and like and actually really i i like i was shocked by the the the, the tape and this record is actually in progress still and like i think I think I found my, I think I have found the way I'm going to finish this record out and, you know, do the stems and, and bring them into Luna and, uh, and do that. So nice. and I did have some stuff going on. You know, I did, there mm -hmm. is an actual mastering chain here, nice. which is just a, you know, just a little bit of the bit uh, of a bump there on the bottom. I like yeah. it. Another and bump on the bottom. The typical, <laughs> your typical, uh, uh, Oh wait, but uh, let's 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 pay attention to this pull tech setting here real quick. Cause you're, so you're boosting four at 30, but you're also cutting 10. Uh, yeah, there. this is this is and in fact this is I do this so often that this is stored. <laughs> the Drew Basic. Stored, the Drew Basic and it's because like I have find I find that like I find that the attenuation at 10 and then just a little past four mm -hmm. puts back puts it back and and like and then the, this top end I tailor per per track, but like the Drew Basic is just is basically just that. Uh -huh. And it's like it just like it's like the D mud. It D muds puts back the right amount of bottom and right around four or a little above it. Yeah. Um, and it's just yeah, that's like that's just kind of the starting point. Do you I like always do you always keep point. it at thirty hertz like that, or do you also change yeah. the frequencies? Nah, it's almost always at thirty. Sixty and hundred always feel like that it pushes the the boost up too high mm -hmm. and into the sort of into a bit more forward bottom end, whereas this is a deeper bottom end. You're gonna um, you're gonna have to A B this for me, friend. I wanna I wanna hear I wanna hear with and without this pull tech thing because oh, okay. I just I just got hip to something really cool here. <laughs> Yeah, this is a uh, this is. I've always like, I've always known that you know using the two in combination is a good way to get some low end contour, but I've never gone that extreme on the attenuation. Well, well you know it's crazy. I'll do that on a I'll do that on a vocal. Like mm -hmm. I'll do that on a uh, thirty hertz on a vocal. Like it doesn't make any sense, but it's a big gentle. It's such a gentle curve, yeah. Oh man, did we just lose your audio again? Ah, oh. I think possibly. Bless. Oh, no way. 
I think we just did. Oh, yeah. He's just messaged. I think he's gone hard. We've got some <laughs> good questions coming in, though, Ben. So we can just hop on with a few that are coming in on the chat if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. I'm so not one of the ones back. that. Oh, yeah. He should come around. One of the ones I saw uh, in one of the videos from someone uh, who's been sort of like reviewing effectively Luna was that we have no MP3 um, bounce. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to share my screen for a sec. Um, yeah. One sec. Show them how to do so, it. Well, it's just that I thought I'd mention this because I've seen a few people like maybe overlook what's actually there. Mm -hmm. So like, you should be able to see my screen right now in this session. So yep. if I hit the uh, option command B to do an export mix down, obviously we can select uh, the main mix as our source. If you want to just mix down your track to sort of preview and send to clients, mm -hmm. um, let's bring that back. And these are your file types, WAV, AIFF. Now people obviously know those two as almost like interchangeable in the fact that they're going to be big many, many megabytes, like for a Lo general pop song, lossless, yeah, yeah. 30, 40, 50, 60 megabytes, lossless data. Yeah. And depending on whether you, what sample rate you're at, but the one at the bottom is AAC. Now we've seen a lot of people kind of saying, oh, no MP3. I use MP3 to send my mixes or beats to my client, you know, on email because it's small, mm -hmm. but AAC is a compressed file format. It's just the one that iTunes uses, Apple music stream. So it's not necessarily MP3. And those of you that are used to MP3 as the sort of like, that's the public term that people use for compressed audio that i send to my mates kind of thing but yeah. you can do that with aac so don't think that there isn't an option for compressing a small file to send to clients do this mm -hmm. and then you can um, choose these two which is variable bit rate and constant bit rate and then you've got your options here so like if you set uh, from, from memory i think cbr 256 is very similar to what would have been on um itunes plus when it was out at the time and now apple music mm -hmm. um, but you can go higher if you wish so if you just want to send a slightly better high quality file then yeah you have these options here so i know that i've seen a few people ask about that <laughs> yeah. and i do this you know for refs and stuff so yeah well it's actually it's, it's kind of it's interesting because uh you know back when i was working in pro tools i'd always do the wave and add the mp3 option to it um so i've kind of gotten into mm -hmm. the workflow with luna of still making it a wave file just you never know when you're going to want that lot you know you never know when an artist is going to be like actually dude i just want to release mix 1.1 can you send me that wave file uh so i can have it mastered and released um, mm -hmm. but there is, there's a, if you go, if you guys go onto the app store, um, uh, there's a app called two MP3 converter. Um, that I'll is, it it's a super, it's a really awesome lightweight MP3 converter, uh, that you can, I've got mine set up. So I'm always doing 320 MP3s. And then all I have to do after I do my bounce inside of Luna is drag and drop it onto here. It automatically spits out an MP3 right where that, uh, mix file was. Um, and then it's good to go. So, you know, what's it's, the name of it again? Sorry, Just it's called remember. a two MP3 converter. And I'll, we only see your Luna screen right now, but I pulled up the app um, on my screen so people could see. Oh, two MP3 converter free. Mm -hmm. That's the one. Cool. Guess what? Best part is it's free, and it doesn't seem to have like ads or any annoying like because it's free. You gotta you gotta put up with their crap. Um, you can actually. Uh, I'm not, I think the in-app purchases are just for batch processing. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like doing a whole album's worth of files in one hit kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. Good tip. I mean, you can even drag like the high res WAV you've exported into iTunes and then you can go and grab the stuff out of the, um, the library, the music library that you've got. And actually that's a great way of adding like quick metadata. Like if you want to put like some album artwork on it, like say you've got a studio logo you want to send out. So you brand up your mixes when they go out to people before they get approved. Mm -hmm. And you can actually add all that stuff in iTunes anyway. So I'm a, I'm a sort of a big fan of doing it outside of the app as well, really. And I've I only ever print WAVs like Ben, but it is possible. I thought we'd bring that one up there. Yeah. How you doing, Drew? Back in the game. Yeah. Yeah, internet gods are not smiling down on me today. <laughs> they're, Sorry. Yeah. they're not your Everyone's friends. Everyone's in Baltimore. Not watching, my friends uh, today. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's watching Netflix. In, uh, hey, so today. I'm still, I caught up to you, Tom. I had two, two, uh, it's, two it's now two to two. Yeah, two to two, right? I don't know how Ben's getting away with zero. Right I know. Now. He's, He's got, got a horseshoe fiber. up his butt. He's uh, got mad fiber to his house. I think. What is your He's up in down, Silicon Valley, ben? nearly. Uh, yeah, what is your up down? Uh, it's like 80 and 60, like 80 down and 60 up. It's it's kind of reasonable. It's nice having that solid up connection. Yeah, um, mine's 50-50. Mine. Mine's mm -hmm. supposed to be 50-50. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, man, I'm seeing so many cool, so many good uh, good things happening here in the chat. And the, by the way, I, I mention this every stream, but that's kind of my favorite part about doing all these live streams with all of you guys, uh, both on camera and also in the chat, is like the community of helpful and over, overwhelmingly nice people 
are attracted to these uh, to these office hours and uh, see lots of very familiar names in there. So it's good to see you guys coming back and checking these out every time. Um, yeah, thanks so much, people. <clears throat> right. Uh, oh, yeah, wow. yeah. So I had a, an, there was another question, uh, Ben, in there earlier, which was somebody asking how they could take the click track and turn it into audio. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, I, we can't right now. But what I would recommend is you do an instrument track. So very quickly make an instrument track with shape here. Mm -hmm. Command and shift I, up. right, Tom? Yep. Yeah, I. yeah. Yeah, my nice session's little, got lots going on. It's a nice, it's a nice <laughs> right little now. shortcut to quickly, you know, you can do Command Shift N for a new track, and of course you could select a, an instrument track there. But if you do the Command Shift I, you just instantly get an instrument track loaded up with shape. Yeah, so I mean, what I would even look at doing is like you've got, um, you know, claves. That's nice, or, mm. or you know, cowbell. marimba Ca hit cowbell, more, more cowbell. Yeah, <laughs> any of the, any of these shaker collection alone is actually good because sometimes I think playing to a click is a bit a bit cold, right? So the ability to get in here, you know, stick the snap value on bar here and mm -hmm. then just go, well, let's just do one bar. Oh, sorry. Select that there. Edit that thing. Let's put in now. Uh, and this is the cool thing with the being able to toggle through the grid shortcuts. Let's just go to quarter notes there. Maybe that's a shaker we want and just do that. Yeah, so I, don't no, your, I don't have your I don't have your audio feed, so I'm uh, I'm doing it. I'm <laughs> improving it for you. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah. We're, we, <laughs> you were a great shaker, Ben. Wow. <laughs> but so if you just do that, and then obviously, uh, you know, that's all duplicated out. You can do it with the Command D control, and then you can just keep going for mm -hmm. the whole length of the track that you need. And what's cool is, say, you know, you're um, you want to do a section where it might be useful to have triplets, or it might be useful to like speed up the click you know, for a difficult part or half time the click, you can just make it, make your own click track. Yeah. And once you've done that, just, you know, if we just label this as click, there you go. You don't even need to have it on solo. Go to the bounce dialogue like we're talking about here. Let's now select tracks, click. Mm -hmm. I won't take the main mix. So we're just going to take the click track, just do that and render it as audio and then bring it, bring it back in and you've got yourself an audio click, but it, you don't even need to make it audio. You leave yeah. it in MIDI and then you can edit the thing. You know, it's great. The mm -hmm. ability to then even do arrangement stuff, which is something that Ben will just, you'll appreciate this one. I know when you get to the end of a track somewhere up here and the click just carries on playing and it starts spilling <laughs> out of people's headphones while you're yeah. tracking, being able to just, uh, instead of getting in and automating the click, but just having your MIDI click going to the like last bar, but maybe the bar before. So it stops before all of the spill happens. Yep. Do it, do it in quiet sections or drops that last for a couple of beat bars in the song. Like when you go to a quiet vocal, just make, if you make it and arrange it, then you get around all that stuff. So I, I think, you know, the click built in is killer and it's very quick and easy to start recording to just turn the click on there. And if you've missed this in the um, recording panel here in the recording workflows, you've got the ac access to sending click to your, uh, Q mix buses. So, if, you know, I've got two buses, but if you have an Apollo X4 or a rack, you can have up to four buses here and send click to different people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then that you can access like who's picking up the various cues on all the various headphone outputs with the cue pop out there. So it's all really easy to find. But I, I actually think being able to have it on a track, that's yeah. the same deal. Then I've got the cues right here and I can send my click to the performers separately. You know, mm -hmm. right here so. gives you gives you even more control over it. And yeah, it puts it up just like as, as if it's a regular track, which can often be a really handy, uh, really handy way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And mm -hmm. you can you can also accent, pick a different note, a different instrument, or different velocity for beat one of the bar. And it's super quick to do it in MIDI. So you know, definitely experiment with that if you'd like to mess around with different click sounds. Nice. Shape comes with so many sources for you. That's awesome. Well, uh, cool, cool. so I saw somebody, we're getting the, uh, the age old question of how to do side chain inside of Luna, uh, show them, uh, show them the button that helps enable, uh, future features, Tom, we're going to hit <laughs> top, right, a button Magic. called feedback. Yeah, guys. So, uh, so there, you know, this is V1 of Luna, uh, there, it does a lot of things amazingly well. Uh, but of course there's certain features, uh, such as sidechain and, uh, you know, being able to show all of your different versions of tracks at the same time. There's, there's things that, uh, me and all of you guys out there in the world know that, uh, would be very nice to have in the next version of Luna. So what's great, this is probably the most powerful feature of the whole, uh, of the whole application is the fact that up in the top, right, there's a feedback button and this goes straight to the developers, uh, and they're listening and they're cataloging all this feedback. Um, and 
they'll be using this as information of like what what do people really really want next um and this will help us inform what's going to happen next with luna so if there's features like side chaining that are really important to, to what your, your workflow hit the feedback button throw it in there same with like reversing clips showing you know having a swiping comping workflow like I'm with you. I'm with all of you guys out there on that. Like all of these are great features that we'd love to do. Uh, so help us prioritize what you guys want to see next uh, coming in Luna. Hey Ben, I got a couple. I can see uh, Terrell. Terrell's asking, could you explain Q routing to multiple Apollo interfaces? And and the idea there is what what Tom showed us with the Qs. The the Q bus is a is a is part of our Thunderbolt loop, right? It's one of the beauties of Thunderbolt is that we have uh, multiple devices that that are connected together through that driver. Mm -hmm. So when when you send something to a Q, it's routable to all of the devices in your system. So those when when Tom brought up those the Q outputs um, and yep. the faders they were assignable to any one of those headphone mixes on any of those devices. So Terrell, that's, your, that's the answer to your question there. Yep. And then, uh, and you can see that I'm, sh I'm showing that here on my screen right now too, of like, yeah. I've got multiple, you know, I've got an X8 and I've got a twin in the back of the room. So to, I've, I've set my system up cause I only, uh, I would never, I'm not tracking bands in here, so I don't need more than two cues ever. Uh, but this way I could easily assign, I could make Q1, um, you know, for me and I can make Q2 for a singer and assign different headphone outputs to that. But you can also mirror these to line outputs on your main monitor unit. So I could use my X16 and say Q2, you know what? I want you to be going out line seven and eight. And now that's a dedicated output on my X16 that will always be serving Q2. Um, yeah. as opposed, and then these ones have the dedicated headphone outs, so they're a, lot, a little bit easier to assign, uh, but it's such yeah. a powerful queue system. And then there's some cool ways that you can, can kind of hack it to get eight mono sends, yeah. um, and some other cool stuff like that. Yeah, um, that mirror to mirror to output is brilliant because that's how you would feed like a, a headphone amp located in the live room, for example, yeah. or multiple live rooms, a or like a headphone distribution system. Yeah. But actually having something like an X4 or on the rack units, you've got two headphone outputs, being able to have one as engineers and one as a vocalist who might be in the control room with you just doing a guide vocal or even the, the legit full vocal. I mean, who does guides anymore? You just do a take, don't you? Just you? do it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you know, that's to me, that was like the matrix of having the headphone uh you know, adjustability across all the different boxes, you know, you could have two or three Apollo stacked together and they, then you've got six headphone amps already. If you've got rack units, for example, mm -hmm. and then you can pick up those different buses across those jacks. It's like, if you were doing one room recording and you're all on location, then you don't even need to carry headphone amps because you can just run cables from the Apollos to all the players in the band. So, you know, it's a very flexible system. Yeah. Well, and I saw, I saw somebody asking in the chat too, uh, about, uh, I saw a few, a few interesting ones that are super easy to hit. One was asking about scrolling side to side inside of Luna. Um, I've got, I've got a really fancy Logitech mouse. It's got a scroll wheel just for going horizontally. But if you are like most of the world and you'll, you've only got up or down scroll, um, you can actually press shift and scroll and that'll help you scroll left to right. Um, if you don't have a dedicated horizontal scroll, or if you've got like a, a trackpad, you can scroll up, down, left, right, all you want. And then another one someone was asking about uh, for fades, especially cross fades, like how, how do you quickly make them? And this is part of the contextual controls. Uh, Connor, I think, did a really great job. It was like office hour number one. I think we went straight into like some of the cool stuff you could do with editing. But you'll notice on this clip, like where I put my mouse changes the icon around my mouse. So if I go down to the bottom left, I can trim. And of course, I'm in snap mode right now. So the, the region is trying to snap two quarter notes. But it's, if I'm like, no, I want to I want to be a little bit more fine detailed about that. Just hold the command key while you're dragging around. And now it defeats the grid and lets me just slide this into this region to anywhere I want. Now up at the top is the fade in or fade out. And same thing, it's going to by default want to snap to a quarter note. But I can just hold command to turn that off and say, you know what? I want to be right here to here. And of course you get this little dot in the middle now that I've created a fade that allows me to change the contour of that fade. Let's zoom in a little bit here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, but the other, the, specifically the question in the chat I'm getting to is how do you do a crossfade? Well, right in the middle, smack dab in the middle, if two regions are right up next to each other and there, there's, a, uh, there's material on either side to be crossfaded, you'll get the little crossfader uh, icon for where the mouse is. And now I'm gonna hit control or sorry, I'm hitting command in order to slip. 
Otherwise, again, it's going to want to do a whole quarter note of a fade. Um, so I'm going to pull that in with command, and now it allows me to generate uh, really quickly create a crossfade across these two regions. Um, so again, that's just. Or you the, could just you could just make it. You could select across and hit the F key too. Absolutely. Yep. So what Drew said, make a selection where you want your fade to be and hit F, and boom, it's this brings a up fade. a really interesting question as well that I answered yesterday for a friend. Mm -hmm. So that's perfect. If you zoom out, Ben, and uh, delete that fade for a sec before you do it. Yep. Make a chop to the to the right of that. Make make like a segment chop. So you've got uh, two crossfades to make. You know, like chop there. This is a feature that I utterly adore. If you drag the fade handle to make crossfade on that section, that's going to do it to both. It does it mirrored, so it saves you. It if for anyone who's used to doing this, it's like halved your manual fade times. Mm -hmm. But and here's something that I checked yesterday. There is a default parameter for fade time in the settings menu. So if you go to the diamond logo. And then settings, you'll see um, here that we've got a default of 100 milliseconds. If you put it to say 10, which I think is quite good for like crossfading, mm -hmm. um, you know, edit like multi edits, and then go back to your session, make a bunch of chops just like in a line, you know, like a, a whole section of like, say you've comped together a load of vocal takes, and then mm -hmm. select over all of those, and then hit um, the F key. You're going to get those that default fade time applied. So you've basically batch faded all of your. Oh, that's edits. awesome. So and if, if you, you triple, you've seen the comping episode, that's that. Yeah, if you triple click, you'll select the entire track. So if you have a whole, you know, if you you could go through a meticulous do your do your you know trim your edits and then just triple click, select the whole thing, F key. Boom! There, and I've created fades on every single one of these. That's, yeah, that's, it will actually do a fade in and out if you don't have it on the region. But I think there's they're nice to just do manually, so you can set them as like a nice clean shape. Mm -hmm. oh, I, see, I see Bo's asking, how do you do a chop? A chop is uh, drop your drop your cursor and then hit the B key. Uh, but you can also use Command E is another one. Um, I think those are the two for, for chop. But I, I'm, I'm so used to the B. Like you hit B and it's chopped. Mm -hmm. um, and that works for the insertion point or selection. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, editing uh, it's a key command to turn on and, off, on and off the click, right? The seven key in the numeric keypad. Yep. Right? yep. Toggle that there, Ben. Mm -hmm. On and off. Yeah. Yep. That's a. Uh, oh, it does. That. It does only turn. Just a, a word to the wise. It. The yeah. when you're doing that, you're turning on and off the click to your monitor. Right. So you can see here, I'm turning the monitor click on and off. The Q clicks uh, stay persistent. So uh, the way I got to this window is on under the workflow. Hit the record workflow, which gives you all the controls you're going to want and need to do uh, to be in the recording phase of your project. Hit click to cue, and then here's where you can control the click uh, track to your different cues. And then this power button turns off the click to all those cues. Yeah. Uh, and of course, you can get cue outputs. You can control your pre and post roll. And I submitted feedback. I submitted feedback that the seven key should do the power button, but that's just me. I don't know I, how I, I feel about that. I feel exactly the same way. And if you. <laughs> Anyone out there does, you know, hit this, but yeah, the, uh, hundred percent agree. It, my, my inclination is be, if I was turning it off up here, it would go everywhere. Um, right. but yeah, that's, that's what the feedback is for us, for us to give them suggestions on how to improve. Um, absolutely. Mm -hmm. How do you nudge a clip left or right? Uh, you, you do it with your mouse at the moment. Uh, so that's, that's one of the, uh, one of the things that we don't have in uh, V1 of Luna. Uh, but you can simply, again, I'm in, I'm typically in snap mode. So if I wanted to nudge this clip, I'm just going to zoom in. So I'm working on a pretty fine time basis. Uh, click on the, ch click on the clip, hold the command key to, def to turn off the snapping. And now I can just nudge that clip forward or backward in time. Um, so unfortunately, yeah, there isn't a little quick little key command to do it quite yet. Um, but you can still you can still accomplish the same goal. You just got to use your mouse. Yeah, I think what's confused some people is that there are nudge commands, but they're for MIDI currently. So I guess it'll, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's what's a little confusing. Yep. Uh, and oh man, there's so many good questions on here, guys. Uh, page scrolling. I don't believe we have. Uh, yeah, no, no auto scrolling of any kind in V1 just yet. Yep, not quite yet. Um, what I've been doing is, and this is something that I've been used to doing for years, because I personally can't stand auto scrolling because mm -hmm. I like to be able to edit while the song is playing. So I, me too. You know, a, a workaround for me <laughs> Same. is three you know, votes. <laughs> yeah, down arrow followed by the right arrow. So if you're just, you know, if you're if you, if the cursor goes off the screen, right? Mm -hmm. So so Ben, if you zoom in, zoom in and hit play, 
and, mm-hmm. and let the cursor go off the screen. They just did down arrow and the right arrow. All right, so um, here, so now I'm playing. I'm playing back out of the timeline, so you guys don't have to hear it. So you're saying yeah. hit the down arrow. Yeah. So pl- yeah, hit down arrow followed by the right arrow. Oh. And it re and it it that's sweet. The, the down arrow is insertion, and the right arrow is center on the right of the of the insertion that there you go drew yeah That's... down and right i've been doing that for for 20 some years like it uh-huh. just instinctually down and over. like you know down and over down and over that's really cool it's and... like playing tetris actually that it really <laughs> yeah it is, is. yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> uh, q mixes sometimes my q mixes send and sometimes they don't uh yeah sometimes guys if you're running into into weird stuff like if the meters stop responding or like uh, a queue isn't working. I've had some like weird solo bugs that showed up during my uh, after hours mix last night. Uh, more often than not, it's just close the session and reopen it, and that kind of seems to refresh it and fix a lot of those little uh, little issues like that. Uh, but if it does persist, then please let us know uh, because it, it, uh, you may have stumbled onto a bug that we hadn't found yet. Uh, oh man, it's so cool to see you guys using Luna all day. Rat hat. Oh the. Plug-in screenshot. Yeah, dude, this is one of my favorite ones. I'm happy to show that one again. <laughs> um, so you can, any AU plugin by default, you'll see it kind of shows up with this little AU icon. But what you can do, I'm just going to, I've been meaning to make one for my favorite sound toys plugin here, Effect Rack. What you can do is you can create your own uh, plugin screenshot for this by clicking on the name of the plugin up here and then say create plugin icon. Oh yeah, that's the one I showed you on day one, wasn't that day mm-hmm. one? Yep, that was yeah. day one. That was my yeah. fa- that was my favorite tip of the week last week. Oh my god, when I when I when I found when I stumbled on that, I just stumbled on that. When I stumbled on that, I was like, oh my god, these this is that's amazing. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Okay, so someone's looking to output their drums to an aux, but you can't pass audio through the bus if you're not actively playing or recording with ARM. Is there a workaround? So I think what you're uh, I think what you're getting at with this is, say you have eight drum, you know, you're trying to record eight tracks of drums, right? Uh, similar, I've got eight tracks of drums in this session, actually. So if you have all these drum tracks and you want to put them together into a bus called drums, it's a very reasonable and uh, responsible thing to be doing. Uh, now, if I were to record enable my drum tracks, what they're going to do, and this is part of the the magic uh, and maybe a little bit of the confusion that people are having around um, ARM and the, the accelerated real-time monitoring, is that when I drop these into record, which it won't let me do because I don't have out inputs assigned to them, uh, which I can fix by... Uh, Drew, what's the shortcut for cascade inputs? It would be shift option command because you want to cascade. You want to uh, sequentially renumber the inputs of the selected. So hold them first and then click it. All right, so shift, option, command, then click on the input. Yep, so and now, then choose an input. There we go. So now it's now it's, it's it's willing to cascade my inputs. And so now I'm just going to select a bunch of inputs on my X16. Now when I drop these tracks into record, I hope nothing bad happens. There we go. Nothing, uh, bad, nothing bad happens because nothing's yep. coming in on those tracks. Um, but notice all these orange boxes are now around my inserts. So when you see an orange box, that means this is part of your uh, part of your accelerated real time monitoring. So you can set up sends, you can set up cues, you can set up UAD inserts. You can't use AU plugins. You can't use tape. You can't monitor through those things. And what's going to do is it's actually going to again. Its whole point, the whole point of accelerated real time monitoring, is to give you guys as low of a latency. Uh, workflow as possible. We we don't want to have anything in that path that could be causing a latency. Um, so it takes it out of the bus. So these tracks are no longer passing through my drum bus. They are going straight to the monitor outputs or going straight to the cue outputs. Um, so that way the musicians are able to hear these tracks with, with as little latency, like it's like what, less than five milliseconds, depending on how much UAD processing you have on here. It's just a super low latency workflow um, is going straight to their headphones, going straight to your monitors while you're tracking. And then as soon as you take these out of record enable, now they're passing through the bus and they're hitting the Neve summing, they're hitting the tape machines, um, et cetera, again. So it's a, you know, I guess, you know, some people would love to be able to track and listen through absolutely everything all at the same time. Um, but with that, you're going to have the, you're going to incur the cost of a little bit of latency um, so that's why accelerated real time monitoring takes care of all of that heavy lifting and the routing and the DSP processing that's required to make sure that your musicians are getting an incredible uh, Q mix to their headphones. 
And it's kind of cool. It kind of, em it emulates the way things used to be. You know, when you tracked to tape, you were not listening off. Typically you were not listening off the repro head. You were listening to the input. So exactly. you heard it, you heard it go down live. And then when you rewound the tape and hit play, then you heard it coming off of tape. So it was well, kind of, this was, kind of, this was the, this was one of the coolest things from uh, when I was down with Shakira tracking that Cass McComb session was, you know, he had set up uh, the whole session um, and we were tracking through it. It had tape on there. He had it routed through some Neve buses as well. So like it was exactly the workflow like we're talking about right now um and similar so like when they're when they were tracking the tape was disabled you know they were just getting the tracks but then when the musicians would come back in you take everything out of record all of a sudden now it's coming off the repro head of the studer inside the session it's now passing through the neve summing you just get that what we were showing earlier on your session drew you're getting that that extra bit of life and sauce to yeah. it you get that instantly and then when the musicians come in especially out of the tracking room and they come into the control room and and uh, get to hear it on the speakers like not only are they hearing their performance but they're hearing that back plus like the life and magic that you're getting off the tape and console uh it really it, it truly it, it reminded me of that old school like what it sounded like and what it felt like to hear a take playing back off the tape for the first time yeah it's so cool it was such a great experience Chat's going wild, by the way. I'm half distracted by the chat. I was going to say, Tom, Tom is mesmerized by the chat. <laughs> yeah. I am. There's so much going on. Especially Which one on are you on, right Tom? Now. Are you on YouTube? You're on YouTube? YouTube chat's going crazy right now. Yeah, there's so much on there. Yeah, there we go. Well, I'm glad we were able to answer so many of these questions, man. Um, yeah, yeah. Should we look at the included plugins that come with Apollo just real quickly to show people what they can use? Like when they, if you've just bought an Apollo and you get Luna and you want to mix. Please like do. Which ones you can use? Yeah, because yeah, that's one thing. That'd be really uh, cool. Some people have been saying, Tom, they've been talking about how they, you know, Luna doesn't come with extra plugins, but you know, it, it comes Your with Apollo shape. did already. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it comes with shape and it comes with oxide and it comes with the arpeggiator. So it's not, it does come with a, a lot of stuff to get out of the gate, but then also your, your, your plugins as you're going to show. Yeah. Yeah. Cause people are obviously used to seeing like a default channel EQ and what have you. So I thought I'd go through the stuff that comes And If anyone um, wants to check this as well there's also a, a link in our faqs on the website if you go to the faq section of viewaudio.com you can type in um uad software bundles or bundles explained and you should get back, yeah just google uh, a really useful list yeah just google uad analog classic and it'll be the first hit mm -hmm. absolutely and so the two you need to pay attention to because uh, because apollos and arrows thunderbolt uh, apollo and arrow come with the real-time version of that bundle it's the last two in the list and i'll just show you them in session here so um first up every apollo and anything you buy from us that's sort of um whether it's dsp or an interface comes with a version of the classic bill putnam senior designed uh, 1958 era tube console the 610 and this is the 610b channel strip which is the one that's a bit more refined arguably like the revision b with a bit more on it so you've got one and a half db steps um and then the last step's a little bit bigger in terms of eq you've got three frequencies top and bottom you've got um a variable gain control you've got this uh almost like a it's the fader for the console but it's actually also uh the output trim control of the sort of tube stage so there's still a lot of tone in this knob mm -hmm. and then you've got a passive well in this case a digital attenuation stage at the bottom here which just gives you like a clean trim but the other these two knobs give you the absolute maximum um kind of harmonic control so that can be loaded up in a unison slot like i've got it here and that comes with your apollo and that's going to let you experience low latency unison preamp recording and there's something that I think is really cool that we, you know, I always like to show this. If I grab my X4 here and I'm on channel one, uh, channel one mm -hmm. actually this input I've selected here is channel two. So I'm just going to press the preamp button to go over and this little dot appeared. You can see it jump, jump around yep. through the channels. So I've got gain control here and you can see me controlling the gain of the plugin. What I love here is if I push and hold the preamp um, button on the Apollo here and on some of them, it might be pushing and holding the encoder on earlier Apollos. Yeah, on the on rack units. Yeah, on the rack yeah. units, it's pressing and holding the encoder. Yeah, because that's what you use to select the channel, exactly. right? So even on X rack, and then on the, the twin and X four, it's twin mark two onwards. You've got the preamp button to push. Um, but you'll see now I've got an orange dot, so I can adjust the gain here. I can tap the preamp switch one more and adjust this fader control, and then one more and knock back the output, so that I'm not going to clip any type of digital recording afterwards. You know, to disc. So you've got this real hands-on workflow for recording you know if you're setting up a vocal mic the ability to just do that all of that tonal control mm -hmm. right here from your apollo that's the level of integration that makes yeah, and that's called Luna. unison mode that's called if you're looking in the manual you can look for unison mode that's what it's called 
It was really yeah, cool. unison gauge that game stage mode that one. Yeah, so it was really cool too. We had a an artist interview last year with Lewis Bell, uh, who did like Post Malone, Camilo Cabello, and a tiny bunch of huge uh, artists. His workflow is he has a twin on his desk, just to his left, and he does that the entire session. So he is writing the vocal to tape by using that unison control uh, to get the gain uh, phrase to phrase. And like, he's basically wow. kind of writing the vocal as he's recording it. Cause that's just like how he's always done it. And he loves, he, he loves how it kind of brings the vocal forward and backward. Um, in his, that is uh, his so productions. Old school. That is so it really old school. is right. Yeah. But that's the beauty of the system. And that's why I love this so much. And so I would probably write this output control, output control cause it's not going to change the harmonic color of the preamp. It's just going to change that like finite riding, small little moves to, to disc, you know, but you could get, pretty crazy and start riding distortion and stuff into performances um but yeah that would be a brilliant way of being able to ride stuff coming in and out <laughs> excuse me so that's the um 610b then um we also have in unison a raw distortion pedal so if we were doing guitar we could do the same thing here if i went to the next channel along and come out again stage mode on that channel two and into channel three here you can adjust for guitar players like I was trying to do this the other day and obviously played a bit out of key because like holding a guitar around a mic stand whilst <laughs> operating in a chat I'm room and a laptop <laughs> is a bit is a bit silly but you know being able to like quickly dial in your volume and distortion and then you know make sure you're not going to overdrive the amp plugin that you put after the pedal to mm -hmm. gain stage correctly that's that's so much fun so you know raw distortion pedal comes with um all of the you know all of these apollos and that, what I love about that check this out on vocals if you do rap vocals or any type of like angry rock vocal or just something where you want edge this is an unbelievably good distortion to just stick on a parallel yeah uh, for vocals and it's an exceptional sounding on rap vocals and then um you know in this case i could show you that you could run that pedal into something like the marshall plexi classic which is also an included guitar amp that comes with the apollo and the arrow so you know that's, this stuff is all all ready free. to roll yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all came, on top of Luna. Mm -hmm. This all came with your twin. I wonder how many people out there like that. Maybe that don't like. It's great that Tom's walking through this because I wonder. There's, I bet you, there's a lot of people out there that are like they didn't even realize that they got all of this for free when they when they got it. Yeah, hands Probably. up, hands up in the chat if if Tom has shown you guys a plugin that you didn't know you owned. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's like Christmas come early today. Then it really the is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I'm, I'm the Easter Bunny right now. So, um, <laughs> so we've also included an Ampeg uh, SVT Classic uh, bass amp. So it's worth mentioning because the Plexi Classic is a Unison enabled, as is this Ampeg bass amp. When you plug in a bass guitar to the jack on the front of the Apollo, and you change between these two jacks on the amp itself, or in the case of the Marshall Plexi Classic, you can move. The jack cable the different inputs if that's in the unison slot so if i just got rid of raw distortion to not confuse people here and put it up there mm -hmm. you now have a change that's going to affect how the guitar feels a little bit under your fingertips yep. you know, while you're playing so this level of integration and that's saved in your session so if i un unrecord enable the track i'm no longer doing bass so that's loaded out of the dsp when you come back your bass amp comes back up and you've got this ready to roll. So they're there. But the stuff that people have been asking about, I noticed this in um, a couple of the videos, you know, like the regular basic mixing tools. Mm -hmm. You have an 1176 LN, um, the legacy version, which is how I got started in UA almost yep. 20 years ago. Me too. So this plugin is amazing, you know, and, uh, and the 1176 SE, so you can Let's track see, both Tom, Tetris. You're playing Tetris here, aren't you? You're stacking them up. I'm <laughs> stacking them up, man. I'm stacking them up. And then we've got the uh, Poltec Legacy, which is beautifully punchy and sweet. And actually, you know, even though we we sort of gone back and done updated versions with more harmonics and tube emulation, mm -hmm. and there's like a fat a fatness to them, sometimes if you're using things on really distorted tracks mm -hmm. where you've stacked in a lot of processing up front in unison and in record effects, uh, and, you know, you're mixing, having a slightly cleaner Poltec that's still got the wonderful curves and the filtering is really, really great. So being able to use these and they're sort of punchy, big, it's wonderful. So you've got that, you've got the Poltec Pro, which is the almost like the MEQ and the EQP1 combined into like a seven band monster EQ. My yeah, personal favorite. Kinda, yeah, that one, that really? a that's a sleeper because, mm -hmm. you know, with the Mark IIs, you can't, there's not, you know, it's tough that we didn't do that with the Mark IIs because it's for DSP reasons. So like to, if you want all that in one GUI, it's like the, the legacy one's the way to go. It's my go-to. Oh, Ben, I'm not surprised because when this came out, I was so excited about 15 years ago, however long it was, <laughs> because the ability to add two or 300, right? You know, here's right some there. tips for you. Mm -hmm. Right here on saxophone and trumpets, 
for warmth because yep. mics mics generally don't get a lot of warmth off those instruments right there because of the just acoustic bell distortion and stuff that's happening on the brass uh, unless you use maybe ribbons or something but adding this like proximity warmth oh beautiful especially if you then take the edge out with the dip mm -hmm. cut some of the mid-range you know and, and then you can get in there and add some velvet 100 and open up at eight, you know, and make it really broad. And you've just got this wonderfully big, quick and easy to use. Such a time. good, such a good, like, I, I don't, <laughs> I typically don't need much more EQ than what is available in that Poltec. You could pretty much do everything on that if you needed to, if you've mm -hmm. tracked well, you know, mm -hmm. and one surgical EQ, you're, you, well, and you let's face run, it. Right? Basically, every record made in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. I mean, that's what they used. I mean, exactly. That's all the classic records, that's what they used. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And so then we've also, we're still going. I mean, I'm not <laughs> even halfway. <laughs> no. Yeah, we definitely include Wait, a lot. There's more. <laughs> there's more. Yeah, exactly. You know, so now you've got the LA2A legacy, which saying, saying the same thing about this, you know, we've obviously done updated versions and you can upgrade to those versions with more of the harmonic distortion. And there's three different optical cell speeds, you know, different aging of the optical compression. But this version here on overheads, I'm going to put my personal tip in on this mm -hmm. one um, for cymbals that are really quite gnarly when you look at them harmonically, especially if the drummer hits quite hard, being able to squash them in a beautiful, smooth way without adding a lot of color, but beautiful kind of smoothness. This LA2A legacy is unreal on things like vocals or cymbals, stuff where you want to keep them really pristine. And I, I'll still use this legacy one all the time. Yeah. Yep. So that's in there. It's incredible. And then we've got the precision series stuff. So you've got a channel strip. Yep. Don't sleep on it because you've got five band EQ. You <laughs> mm -hmm. can have shelves, filters, and you peaking get, EQ. Yep, you can get narrow. You can get broad. You can do a little bit of everything in that one. And this is my little trick here. This compressor has um, this auto gain on it, auto makeup gain, as I said before, with like the API thing. Mm -hmm. I know we're probably running over time now, Ben, but we're in. So um, this, is, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is what the people really want to know. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> well, you've got like on, the, on something like the API or even SSL channel comps, you know, they, they all have this auto makeup gain and they, they don't quite ever estimate the perfect amount. So you always end up with a little extra punch than you thought because of the way the gain works. And this is, I'm going to, I'm going to say, I think this is one of the punchiest compressors on the whole library mm -hmm. because it's got this, um, it's just, you know, set a slow attack yeah. and just crank the threshold and it's just get like on, on side sticks and snares. It just kind of goes pop. It puts mm. this epic pop on the front of everything. So that's, that's awesome. really cool. And then you've got, there's a reflection engine, which lets you design, um, rooms, you know, from effectively like fan shapes to, you can select here a cubic type room shape for small, ambiences and you've got stacks of really cool presets here mm -hmm. um, which is wonderful really short ambiences there's two delays so you've got like we drew showed um and then paul drew earlier sorry um had his ping pong delay set you've got dual delays you've got ping pongs you've got chorus and flanger mode so if anyone's looking for create creative effects and that's these all things are this really mod. really dsp efficient too like really mm -hmm. late on the dsp and sound great yeah yeah and, and sound fantastic so you've got a long version of that, which just gives you much, much longer delay times if you're looking to do something creative, right? Mm -hmm. You know, epically long stuff. So they're, they're all there. And then finally, you have Reverb, which is the first Reverb that I started learning Reverb with, <laughs> the Real Verb Pro. And what I love about this is you can kind of easily go, oh, I'd like a cubic room, and I'm going to blend it with, say, a bit of spring Reverb. And you can make the blend there, and you can see it change the pattern of reflections. You can say, I'd love to have like a really lively room. So maybe we're going to put, I don't know, concrete block on the walls and we're going to have wooden <laughs> floors and, uh, and then just like make it long or short and turn the reverb up, you know, the late reverb up and down versus the early reflections and you can delay them or make them a cluster. And you can like, geek out I know so hard in this one. It's such a fun, <laughs> it's such a fun one to play with, right? Cause yeah. playing with materials and playing with the different shapes of the room and all it's, it's, it's completely wild what you can create inside of there. It's real like NASA level science of acoustic like absorption coefficients and stuff. But they built this control I love, the distance control, to go from I actually have an even tide behind me in the rack which does this, the position control. It's one mm -hmm. of my favorite reverbs. And this is similar. You can go from like really upfront sound with some reverb or push the sound sort of like back into the space. So, you know, definitely experiment and go and have a look at all these amazing presets. Cause that's something if you just want a nice tracking reverb. Uh, right up and ready to go that's it's there you can do a whole record with all these plugins so that's what comes with an apollo twin or an arrow and if you buy um a rack unit for example or one of the slightly more expensive units then you get 
the plus bundle and that adds the legacy fairchild 670 which is a wonderful tube compressor made very famous by people like the beatles right mm -hmm. and then you get this precision enhancer which is going to add um like extra bass harmonics that let bass cut through on small speakers and you can cascade a couple of different ranges I, i'm a real fan of like all of them in all the time mm -hmm. or like mode d i use a lot but it, it lets like if you put that on the moog bass you're going to end up with like a double fat super huge thick bass sound so definitely go check all of that stuff out because you have that running with Luna plus you've got oxide tape in there and shape to get going so that's kind of a good overview i think of like the, the proposition of what what you what you oh, start with oh and just like a entirely free uh recording platform you know just oh, oh things just, like uh, that. did i forget that i think i forgot that <laughs> sorry it's quite it's quite late here now <laughs> Well, but uh, yeah, dude, uh, Tom, that's, that's such a good overview of it. Yeah, so I, I, I always forget how many things come for free with every Apollo. And that's always, it's good to have a reminder like that of like, there is so much material uh, that people can use right out the uh, right out the gate. And of course, any uh, premium plugins are like Neve Summing or Revell or the Minimo. They all have 14 day free trials as well. So if there's something that you're thinking about getting or you just want to see if, if it uh, you know, if it adds what you think it's going to add to your mixes or to your productions, you can always uh, try them out for 14 days. Um, and the last thing I wanted to shout out before we jump off is for what Thomas is showing us here. Uh, if you guys go to YouTube, uh, Pure Mix just uploaded. Uh, it's a video they have they did. I think this is like 10 years ago. This is this was back when I was first starting at Pure Mix uh, way back in the day. Fab did an entire video talking about the Analog Classics bundle. So there's 45 minutes of Fab with his old haircut uh, sharing sharing really good tips about the Pultec Pro, about the LA-2A. And really, if, if you're new to those tools at all, uh, this is a great explanation of uh, of what each of those plugins do and what they that have to offer. That hair is beautiful. And the hair it's is terrible. wonderful. That's, so, it's, uh, it's also, this is serendipitous because that's just come out. We haven't planned this at all. We, no, yeah, no, totally, totally lined up. coincidence. Right. Well, awesome, guys. Well, we've gone, uh, this is our first office hour where we've gone into overtime, which I fully appreciate, especially since we're highlighting free things. I will always go into <laughs> overtime to, to give people the heads up on free stuff. Uh, so I saw so there's probably tons of questions that we didn't quite get to this afternoon. We're going to be back tomorrow morning with DJ Jazzy Jeff. Uh, so I'm going to be answering his questions uh, and we'll have guys in the chat helping you guys out uh, answering questions on the chat. But then tomorrow afternoon, uh, tomorrow is Friday. So tomorrow afternoon, we'll have a nice little uh, happy hour in the afternoon where, again, we'll make it Q&A focus, kind of show you, answer your questions you guys are having, show you how to pull things off inside of Luna. So if we didn't get to today, join us back here tomorrow at uh, 2 p.m. PST. And everybody have a fantastic evening. Thank you. You too, Ben. Awesome. Cheers. Thanks, Tom. guys. Cheers, See you guys. next time.